Hello, everybody. We are live with a very special guest, Charlie Lee, and it's your boy Rich here with David Modell and the Epic Hustler. How are you doing today, Charlie? Good. Thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for joining us today. Um, Epic, do you have any questions for Charlie's before, so we can get started? Pretty much, uh, I'd kind of just like to know where he sees Litecoin going in the near future and if he has any major plans for the coming up year. Yeah, so um, one of the few things I want to add to Litecoin in the coming in the near future is to add um, more fungibility. So adding something like confidential transaction, basically make it so that um, if you're sending coins, you can make it so that you can't um, see how much you're sending. So there's uh, some privacy to it. So that if you get paid in like Litecoin for salary, you don't have to expose that when you're just buying a, a cup of coffee, for example. Very good, very good. I oh, think that bro. that's a, uh... That's that's key in in cryptocurrencies is security protection being anonymous. Um, do you see there being an issue uh, with the way the industry is going right now? We've seen a lot of industry uh, issues in the industry with China uh, regulating and making ICOs illegal. Do you see that affecting Litecoin in any way? Do you see what's happening? They call it FUD. Um, all the FUD happening in the industry. Do you see that that having any effect in Litecoin whatsoever? Um, not really. I think the the ICOs, the China and other countries, and even the USA, uh, with the SEC coming out with their statements and coming cracking down on ICOs. I think that's expected. I was, I've been expecting that for a while now. Uh, the the ICO craze has just been a bit too much, where people are just throwing money at it and lots of pump and dumps, lots of uh, scams. So it's good that there's some regulation to make sure that people don't lose money from it. And you think that uh, China eliminating ICOs altogether will be a good thing for the industry then? Is that your opinion on that? Or do you not think it makes a difference either way? I think some regulation is needed. I don't think eliminating ICOs totally is a good thing. Um, I do think that it may cause the whole industry to slow down a bit. The recent um, price going crazy with Ethereum and Bitcoin and everything had a bit to do with all the ICOs and people just throwing money at, the, at it because they think it's a good way to make money, like a get-rich-quick get scheme. So that's, that will slow things down. Um, I think that's good for, for the long term of uh, Bitcoin, Litecoin, cryptocurrencies in general. Now we saw a run here. Uh, Bitcoin obviously has been doing very well. It's currently at around just under forty four hundred today. Um, we saw Litecoin do a major run to a hundred dollars, and now Litecoin is back to around like fifty three fifty four. What do you think? Like uh, you probably can't really project or predict where you think it's going to go. But do you have like a forecast of how high or where you think Litecoin can go for some of the investors that are watching? Do you have a an idea of where it can go, or is it just kind of like in the hands of the gods? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the market, right? I, I know as much about price and future price as anyone, as little, right? So um, to be honest, like this year, I didn't expect the price to be so high, right? When it was $4 at the beginning of the year, and I was thinking to myself, if it hits 30, I'll be extremely happy. If it hits 50 to break the all-time high, that would be amazing. And seeing it go to like almost 100, that's like totally unexpected. So, I mean, and it dropped back down to, to 50 now. So there's no way to predict any of this. And being the creative Litecoin doesn't make me all of a sudden know exactly how the price would move. Um, yeah, so I really don't know. It, it, it could go to a few hundred or it could go go back to ten dollars or four dollars. I mean it's it's the market. I have a question from one of our from one of our viewers. He's asking, Hey Charlie, this is from Marco. How you doing, Marco? Hey Charlie, what do you think will happen to Litecoin before and after the Bitcoin fork? Do you uh you, the price, right? Yeah, do you think there's going to be any, do you expect any major changes in Litecoin's price or anything happening um, due to the fork that's occurring here? I think if there's any um, 
apprehension about the fork, people may buy more Litecoin to kind of hedge it. Um, and it's true for other altcoins too. Uh, altcoins will do well when uh, there's potential issues with Bitcoin. And if the fork turns out to be um, nothing, nothing bad happens, then people might go back to getting back to Bitcoin. It's kind of like a, a safe haven play or, or just fled to the security just to um, kind of hedge your bets. So people, people would do that. I don't know exactly what would happen with the price and it's really, it's really hard to predict. So I know uh, myself personally, I'd like to be able to go buy popcorn in a movie with Litecoin. But the question is, uh, how soon do you see merchants actually adapting to Litecoin where I can be able to do that? I think it's still early stage for, for all of cryptocurrency where, um, where merchants will start accepting uh, Bitcoin or Litecoin. Um, we're waiting for the technology to platform to be built out. So more work on Lightning Networks to make it really good for good use for payments. And in the end, it has to be uh, easier to use than the existing system, right? Right now, if you're using credit cards, cash, it's it's very it's very simple. Even though the merchants get charged like whatever two percent, the consumer doesn't see that, at least not directly. And it's just so easy to use a credit card that right now, if you're trying to spend Bitcoin, Litecoin, you're fiddling with um, QR codes and and so scanning QR codes with cell phones. It's just not um, easy to use right now, especially with on-chain transactions taking um, multiple minutes to confirm. So I think it, it'll take more work for the whole industry to build out to make it easier for people to spend uh, Litecoin and Bitcoin before that so happens. Have you, uh, have you looked into making like a, your own type of credit card for Litecoin or debit card type of deal, a visa we could use to spend it? I haven't. I mean, there's there are various other companies that are doing um, at least like a stepping stone of a credit card that is backed by uh, Litecoin or Bitcoin in your in your Coinbase account or some other account. Um, I'm more focused on like the network, um, the protocol layer, making sure everything runs smoothly. So just like how the Bitcoin developers aren't like building out easy ways to, to spend Bitcoin, it's more for like companies to, um, to build that out on top of the Bitcoin and Litecoin network. Okay. Yeah. Uh, if I may interject, uh, hi, Mr. Lee, I'm, I'm David Modell. Um, if I could just ask, one of the main features of Litecoin is that uh, it processes a block so quickly. Uh, I've read uh, two and a half minutes per block as opposed to Bitcoin, which would be 10 minutes per block. Uh, how fast do you envision in the near future uh, Litecoin being able to process that type of, uh, type of data? Well, for on-chain transactions, Litecoin will it is faster. It's four times faster, so it's two and a half minutes versus Bitcoin's ten minutes. Yeah. Uh, for in the future, when the Lightning Network is uh, working and easy to use for a consumer, transactions will be instantaneous. So wow. you can send money, and the other side will receive it. It's it won't be on chain. It will just settle on on chain, but it will be crypto cryptographically. Um, Secure. Yeah. So, yeah. Charlie, one, okay. sorry, Charlie. Oh, yeah, one yeah. of the things that I that I that I've been realizing, and and I'm an investor in Litecoin. I buy it at Coinbase, and you had a history in Coinbase, correct? Uh, yeah, I was uh, at Coinbase for about four years. And like, what do you think about their platform? Because being a Canadian, I'm buying Bitcoin, Litecoin, and Ethereum at Coinbase every day, and I really like it. But I have some people that like it, some people don't. Like, what's your opinion on Coinbase? Do you like it as a platform? Obviously, they're selling your coin, so you like that. But do you, is is it a program that uh, a platform that you recommend to people? What do you feel about? Yeah, Coinbase? it's it's definitely the easiest way for um, for anyone to get into cryptocurrency. I mean, it's something that makes holding coins very simple for the average user. So it's very. Um, it's very intimidating for, for a number of people to get into cryptocurrency otherwise, where you have to download a wallet and hold the coins yourself. So having a, a company like Coinbase handle the security for you 
and make it easy for you to just connect the bank account and buy and sell coins. Uh, that makes it very simple. And it's something that it's really needed in this industry where it's just to make it easy for people to get into it. And of course, once you once you get your hands dirty and start playing around with Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ether, and really know, like really understand what's going on, you can actually start um, owning your own private keys and controlling your own coins. But it definitely needs like a step in stone like Coinbase to get to that point. Very good. And one of the things I wanted to ask you is, like, Litecoin is, when I read about it, it is the coin for merchants, correct? Yeah. So, yeah, well, the target is to be, a, like, the payment method. So that's what I wanted to know. I just kind of want to hear from your own mouth. What What is it that is your target market? What is it exactly that you want Litecoin to be known for? Is it the coin for merchants? Because that's kind of the way I look at it. I look at it as the coin for merchants in the future. Is that correct? Yeah. That's my view also. The coin to that people would spend to buy everyday goods and services. And you currently have some merchants I saw on your website, and you can actually take the Litecoin, um, you can take the Litecoin decal, and you can put it on your API on your website, have it featured, and you can actually receive Litecoin in exchange for services. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Just like Bitcoin, it's easy to accept Litecoin for services. I mean, there's a fair market value for Litecoin and Bitcoin. So, yeah, and there are a few. Um, Payment processors that lets you easily convert Litecoin to to fiat to US dollar or whatever the yeah, currency you use. So it's easy for merchants to accept Litecoin and easily convert to their local currency. And what is I, I saw that there is a qualification period where you have to actually apply to become a merchant. What would be the qualifications for a merchant that's watching you today that's interested in becoming a merchant with Litecoin? But there's no qualification for to become a merchant. You can just you can, anyone can that Litecoin for goods and services. Okay, so you just apply for it through the website and you well, can... There's, then... no, there's no application. You just, you just download a wallet and you accept coins. Okay, right. very it's good. Just like... Very good, very good. question I have, I... Uh, just as mining or miners in general, I see that Litecoin actually mining for compared to like Ethereum or another coin like that. And would you recommend... Uh, mining Litecoin over Bitcoin on a platform like Genesis. Um, Genesis. Well, I mean, I don't. I wouldn't recommend any um, mining. This is a cloud mining company, right? Is that what you're talking about? Uh, he's talking about Genesis Mining, which is a, a a company that will pay you Bitcoin if you invest in them, and they say they're supposedly mining in Iceland. It's one of the platforms that exist. I wouldn't recommend mining that way. I mean, you just, I don't know much about how Genesis mining works, um, whether or not they're actually really mining. But in order to, it, there's always a chance that they're not and it could be a scam, it could turn out to be a scam. So um, if you really want to mine, then you should buy some mining hardware and actually mine yourself. Yeah, and how would that compare, like mining Litecoin compared to Ethereum? Like, uh, I know how you're four times faster than Bitcoin. How does that work, mining also? Can uh, you create it four times faster? No, it depends. For for Ethereum, you can use GPUs to mine. For Litecoin and Bitcoin, you would need to use um, custom ASIC hardware to mine Litecoin and Bitcoin. It also depends on how like your electricity costs. So, it really depends on what. Um, where you are to see and what hardware you get to determine if it's um, profitable to mine. Very good. Uh, if I may uh, stay in that topic right, of uh, mining. Yeah. If, uh, on the topic of mining, if I may interject, um, you said on Twitter, Mr. Lee, that um, China actually will not ban mining operations or the Bitcoin network. Um, I, you know, if you could just expand on that, uh, is, is this, this is from a, what, what is your source for that? Uh, well, I'm not going to reveal my source, uh, no, I, I understand, but, yeah. um, just from what I, from, from what I know they are, so they have banned, um, Bitcoin exchanges, right? Cryptocurrency exchanges. So the cryptocurrency exchanges right. 
have shut down or are shutting down very soon. Um, but they, at that time, didn't have any plans to um, ban mining or the network. And all um, the news, the fun about all that, I believe, came from people shorting the market and just creating news, right? Fake news about China banning because it's so, it works so well when for the past few years where if you just talk about China, if you just create rumors about China banning Bitcoin, the price will crash or the price will, will drop. So it's easy to make money if you're able to create this fake news rumor, right? So that's what I see going on in the past few weeks. So, the, okay. So it's actual manipulation going on. Um, interesting. Okay. Well, I, is this a short term play? Because trying to manipulate the, um, you know, the price of Bitcoin to the downside, uh, it has not been very successful over, over the long term. Um, yeah, it's, it's a short term play, right? Like, um, the past few weeks, I mean, Bitcoin price dropped to like 3000 something, right? Yeah. If I remember or something. So it's now back to 4,400. So, yeah. um, it went from 4,000 to 3,300 and you can make a lot of money if you time it right, short the market and release some fake news and, um, like release a lot of FUD and I'm sure they, they bought back in. So, well, yeah, I don't know you heard about, you heard about what JP Morgan did, right? Uh, yeah, Jamie Jamie Diamond, Jamie yeah. Diamond said that it was Jamie a fraud. Diamond. He called it a fraud, and then the same day that he called it a fraud, they reported that they bought three million dollars of uh, Bitcoin. J.P. Morgan was the same day that he was calling it a fraud. They literally were buying the dip. Uh, I'm not sure if that's actually proven to be the truth, right? I know, like, or or that he's doing that. He did it on purpose, but yeah, I'm not surprised if he. If something like this was going on, but I don't think I wouldn't say it's definitely what happened. Yeah, I mean nobody knows a hundred percent for sure, but on one side he's saying, "Oh, my daughter's buying it." On the other side, he's saying, um, "Oh, it's a fraud." And then you can see it plainly. I've I've done videos on it that uh, J.P. Morgan was buying Bitcoin while it was going down. It's been proven. Yeah, it's possible. He was buying over three million dollars worth of it while he was publicly saying that. Anybody within his firm who buys Bitcoin is stupid. His firm was buying Bitcoin while he was saying that. So he's kind of talking out one side of the mouth and talking out at the other at the same time. Yeah. Now, is there anything new coming out with Litecoin that you're working on? Any new technology? Anything uh, revolutionary that you're trying to do that's going to make Litecoin faster, better, stronger that uh, you guys are working on that you could talk to us about? Anything coming up around the corner that's that's exciting with uh, Litecoin that you could share with the public? Well, there's a few things. Like I, I touched on briefly about um, the confidential transactions making um, making transaction amounts uh, hidden, so adding more privacy. Um, we're also looking to adding uh, more smart, smart contract capabilities to Litecoin, um, working with Lightning Network teams to to make um, to make lighting networks easy to use for for people, and we're also doing a whole redesign of the of the um, Litecoin Core UI to just make it easier for people to use. Very good, very good. Do you guys ever do any events or conferences? Are you planning on doing anything like that for Litecoin to help create more visibility or maybe create more awareness to the mainstream public? Um, I mean, I'm doing quite a bit of like YouTube videos, YouTube interviews and, and stuff like that. Um, in terms of like conferences, I, we're not organizing any conferences, but I, we've, we've heard people, we've heard rumors that some people are trying to organize like one conference. Um, I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's really important right now to kind of market Litecoin. It's still kind of early stages. It's better to just kind of keep our heads down and start and keep working on the, the protocol and the network. If I could just ask a question. Right, I, I, go ahead. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm looking through your tweets, right? Now. You have some, you have a, a lot of followers an amazing following as you should. You actually published your uh, tips for following uh, Charlie Lee on Twitter. There are some rules if you want to follow him. 
Uh, one, don't ask Charlie to predict future prices, which I think we might have broken that rule today, so that's okay. I hope you'll forgive us. Um, don't ask you what you think about this or that coin. <laughs> okay, off limits. Uh, don't ask you to only tweet about Litecoin. Don't blame you if you don't blame Charlie if you lost money investing in Litecoin. <laughs> got it, Charlie. <laughs> not, not your fault. Okay, got it. Um, don't curse at you or be really annoying. And everything else is fair game. I'm just curious. Have you had real problems on social media with people um, being disrespectful, cussing at you, and blaming you for actually blaming you for losses uh, in, in their sure. actions? Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, that tweet is kind of a joke, but it's it's based on reality, right? All all of that has happened. So, um, and it's kind of like I'm asking people to to help me out because I I have a hundred fifty thousand followers, and it's just hard for me to keep track of to like filter through all the messages like or notifications I get every day um, to actually have some meaningful conversations. So I started blocking a lot of people that are annoying or just cursing at me. I mean, it's just, they they get upset when they bought Litecoin when it's like $90 and now it's 50 and they lost like 40% of their money and they're just like, they want someone to blame, right? Um, and just like, or people complaining that why am I not pumping Litecoin on Twitter? Why am I talking about Bitcoin or some or other coins? Um, please get back to you, do my business, which is to pump Litecoin and make them rich. So I'm not here to... <laughs> I, I tell you, I'm not here to make you rich. I'm just <laughs> so don't expect me to. Um, and yeah, so I, I get that. I get those tweets in each of these categories every day. Litecoin is up. Litecoin is up one thousand two hundred percent in the last year. Is that not good enough for people? Well, it's good enough if you bought Litecoin last year and held to now. It's not good if you bought Litecoin at nine dollars. The I guess so. the unfortunate thing is that. A lot of people buy, buy coins when it's at a high because that's when the news cycle, that's when like all the hype and, and the pump happens and people hear about it and like, wow, Litecoin is going up. It's at 90, it could go up to 200. I should buy some Litecoin now. And then get in that high and then when it drops back down, when coins do do that, they get upset and feel like they got ripped off by someone. And naturally they would blame me for it. And, well, which, course, which, which is crazy, <laughs> which is crazy because at the end of yeah. the day, like you said, you cannot control the market. And um, the one thing I like about Litecoin and one of the reasons why I've been buying it is that when you go to Coinbase, you only have three options. You can buy Bitcoin, Ethereum and Litecoin. And the reason why I was buying Litecoin as a new investor a few months ago was because it was the cheapest. It's just automatic. It's the cheapest of the three. So it, yeah, it, like. it must have the most upside in the way I think as an investor. We've seen Bitcoin go up 500% in the last year. They're at 4,400. We've seen Ethereum go up 2,000% in the last year. They're at 300 bucks. We've seen Litecoin go up 1,200%. It's at 53 to $55. So naturally, you guys got a, you know, a, a really good circulation of supply. I believe it's like 55 million. I think that's correct. Someone that in that yeah, range, fifty-seven million. Fifty-seven million. So you've got a 50, 50, 50, Yeah. Yeah. It's at 50, 53 million like coins right now. Fifty-three million circulation, and I believe your max supply is eighty million, something like that. Yeah, eighty-four million. So you guys don't have a billion coins. You don't have even a hundred million coins. So you're relatively tight. You even have a smaller circulation and supply than Ethereum does. And Ethereum is at six times a higher price. So based on those fundamentals, that's why I've been buying Litecoin. And a lot of people have been telling me the same strategy. Oh, I'm buying it because it's cheaper than Ethereum and, and Bitcoin. Why do you think it's cheaper? Is there a fundamental reason why it's cheaper? Is, is Ethereum and Bitcoin that much better than Litecoin? Or is it just because people started buying them first? They've been around longer? Like, what's your theory about that? Do you have a theory about that? Why you think it might be lower than those other two? Well, it's, um, well, like, first of all, Litecoin has been around longer than Ethereum. That's right. Um, Since 2011, all, correct? Since 2011, yeah. yes. Yeah. And, and the price, I mean, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a trick. So the price is, doesn't matter that much. I mean, it's kind of like, it's 
like in stock markets where a company would do a 10 for one split um, because the price is too high, right? Just because like Google stock could be a thousand dollars and just people are like, this is too expensive. I'm not going to buy any. But then after they do a, a split and it's only a hundred dollars, people are like, oh, it's cheap. I'll buy some Google stock now. Even though in reality, it's exactly the same. It's just, there's more, when it's at a hundred, there's 10 times as much um, amount out there. That's right. right. So the, the market cap is the same. That's correct. So it's it's just playing on people's psychology. And Litecoin has always been uh, cheaper than Bitcoin. And I have here, I do hear people buying Litecoin because they think it's cheaper. And the whole thing about that is, it's kind of silly, but it it, it happens. And I guess I'm not complaining, but it's just it's funny. <laughs> well, it, it, when you think about it, like let's look at Ethereum. They got a 94 million in circulation. They're trading at three hundred dollars. Litecoin's got fifty million in circulation and is trading at fifty dollars. So yeah, you got to. Well, I mean, Ethereum has a much higher uh, market cap than Litecoin today, right? Ethereum is this is about ten times bigger than Litecoin, so that's why the price is is much higher. But the market cap is the market cap is simply sorry the market cap is simply just the price plus the coins. So if you have more coins, you're going to have a higher market cap. I mean, look at Ripple. They're in the top five, not because of their price, but simply because there's billions of coins. It doesn't necessarily make it a better company. Not to say Ripple's not a good company. I actually do like Ripple. But it just has so many coins out there, which automatically gives them a higher market cap. It's not necessarily always a true determination of value of the company. Because you could just, sure, I mean, the, you could just print as many coins as you want. Sorry, go ahead. Market cap, market cap works um, fairly well, but it's not 100% accurate. Because in the, in the case of Ripple, it's unclear to me how many coins are actually controlled by Ripple, the company themselves, versus being out there. So if it's controlled by the company, it's not really uh, freely exchangeable. Correct. Then it's not it's not a good representation of the um, the value. The market cap is not a good representation. Because if they control like ninety percent of the quantity, and then they can kind of control the price or they control the market cap. Right? That's correct. That's so right. um, it's market cap is a good representation for for coins that are more um, that have all the coins kind of in circulation. So for Bitcoin, Litecoin, Ethereum, it is a very good representation of it. So the, Ethereum is definitely ten times more valuable the whole um, uh, coin than Litecoin right now. Okay. So I have a, a crazy question here. This is kind of out of the box, but uh, uh, so I'm thinking like if the big banks do buy into this, get into a cryptocurrency, do you think there's a possibility and long down the line that we could cash our checks and get it in Litecoin or get it in Bitcoin instead of the U.S. dollar? Do you think there's actually a possibility of that? Um, I mean, there's a possibility that you actually will get paid out in cryptocurrency, right? Where you actually, your salary will be in cryptocurrency and you'll just get it, right? Um, you can always take your paycheck and buy uh, cryptocurrency. A lot of people do that, right? They Every two weeks, they buy, they have like a recurring buy on Coinbase to um, just buy some crypto every week, with every two weeks with their uh, paycheck. You kind of, that's, it's, I think that's a smart way to invest in cryptocurrency. Uh, just you know, cost average it. That's kind of what I've been doing. When I get a certain amount of money, I take a certain percentage of that. I'll buy into a certain coin. And the reason I like your Litecoin is because it's actually the merchant-based coin. So, I mean, if, if our nation and the rest of the other nations actually apply that, I think it could be a really great deal. You know, I, I like the fact that if I get Litecoin, I have a chance of my $2,000 dollars or whatever you know what i mean yeah yeah i i know your time is, is short mr lee i just i just want to ask, yeah I, I just want to ask this real quick um mr lee uh, i've got a quote here maybe it's it's a misquote that uh, you've been noted as saying that icos initial coin offerings are the biggest threat to crypto uh is that is that truly how you feel or is that a misquote it's not, it's not the biggest threat to crypto. I think that's a misquote. I think it's um, ICOs uh, could be a threat to the price of crypto in the short term, where if they get um, 
if they get really regulated and banned, um, it could hurt the price because all the there's a lot of money at least for Ethereum, a lot of ether that is tied up in ICO uh, companies, and if that uh, ban happens, the ICOs might start selling all their ethers, causing the price to drop. And when the price drops, it's going to cause all the other ICOs to sell theirs because they don't want to get be left holding a lot less money than they originally raised. So that could cause the price of ether to crash, and that could bring down the whole market for at least in the short term. So uh -huh. I think that's the case. Um, and recently, I mean, Ethereum price has been pretty um, bearish, um, and I think a lot of it has to do with that. Will it crash more? I don't know, but it's definitely a big threat out there. Gotcha. Well, I know you're probably a pretty busy guy, so you probably got a lot to do, but I remember when I actually met you when the uh, guy was getting a light, light coin tattoo live, and you were in the chat room. Uh, I was just kind of wondering when you're going to get a light coin tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't need a light coin tattoo. I mean, my, my face is a representation right. of light coin for a lot of people, so. Right. He is light coin. He doesn't need a yeah. tattoo. Yeah. Uh, Charlie, before we go, because it's been 30 minutes and I know that uh, you really got to run, is there anything you want anybody that's watching to know um, before you leave us today um, about Litecoin? Anything you want to say? Any information you want to deliver to the public that's watching today? I think um, I just want people who've never heard of Litecoin before or, or Bitcoin to actually just try it. Right? Go to Coinbase.com or your favorite exchange. Um, and go buy some Bitcoin, Litecoin, and try to spend it. Try to see how it works, see how um, cryptocurrency works and why it's it's so cool. And find merchants that accept Bitcoin or Litecoin and, and spend it and buy some stuff with it. I love so it. I love it. I love the message. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope we can have you again here on the roundtable. Um, thank you very much, Charlie Lee, everyone. Let's give it up for Charlie Lee. Thank you very much, Epic Hustler. Thank you. Thank you very much, Epic Hustler, for joining us. Thank you very much, David Modell, for joining us. Everybody, have yourself a great day. And buy Litecoin. It's not Charlie Lee saying it. It's Rich D saying it. Buy Litecoin. It's a big winner. Thank you, Charlie. Have yourself a great day. And we'll see you soon, my friend. Thank you. Thanks, Charlie. Thank you, everybody. It's your boy, Rich. I'm out. See you soon.